Okay guys, here you go. I promised to do a little walk around video yesterday and that first one didn't quite take so we're going to try this again. Um, we got uh, the outside of the cart, you know, all but completely finished. I got my new wheels and tires on it, painted and cleaned up. I got the rear seats built, platform, all important cooler carrying area. Got that all done. Um, got my LED tail lights, brake lights, uh, someday turn signals. There's the uh, factory Ninja exhaust system or tailpipe out there. Wanted to keep that just mainly for sound more than anything. Uh, that's all pretty much done. I have to put the cowling on. I'll do that later on today. Um, I mounted the uh, factory puke tank in there. Uh, put that in. Uh, factory radiator, uh, coolant fan. That's you see hooked up to the thermostat on the on the engine. Uh, this is my antenna for the uh, GPS speedometer. Um, I mean, you can see up in there that snake pit of junk up in there. That's the instrument panel. Uh, oh, over here you can see the coolant lines. The uh, large aluminum one, that's the return line from the engine. But uh, you can see there's also a, an oil cooler line and a head coolant line that goes to the radiator as well. And that all works good. I've let it idle over an hour now with no, no heat problems. Here's the final arrangement on the shifter. Uh, the one to the rear by the floorboard, that's the push-pull cable for my transaxle, forward and reverse. And then this other one with the linkage rod, that's the one, if you can see it or not, it goes down through a bell crank that transfers vertical to horizontal movement. That runs straight back to a shift lever I put back on the engine. So I don't know how well that'll work either, but we'll find out. Uh, that's about it under there. Then up here, uh, I went with uh, the uh, factory instrument cluster. This thing here, uh, it's a tack. The speedometer I don't use, but it's got uh, water temperature, oil temperature, pressure. It's got uh, all kind of little goodies and features. You can see it cycle through when you turn the key on. It shows. Uh, shift points, uh, obviously the neutral marker and all this other good stuff, but I wanted to keep that. Uh, the push button below it's for the headlights, that's the headlight switch on and off, and then uh, over on this side, got the kept the factory club car, uh, that's the fuel gauge and an hour meter, kept that. Uh, push button starter, now that speedometer is pretty cool, this little button here is a, a tattletale button, I got kind of mixed emotions on that, I mean with the you know, it's nice to know exactly what you run, but I guess on the downhill side, I can't lie either anymore. But uh, here's the feature that I understand is good for lots of horsepower. Let that cycle through again. My push button starter. I understand that's good for several horsepower and extra miles per hour. Uh, on the pedals, there's the the uh, clutch pedal that we set up. You know, of all the people that's looked at this, not one person has asked why I've got two brake pedals. That's not occurred strange to anybody so far that's looked at it. Uh, here's the emergency brake. Now, that used to be up between the stock seats, and I shortened it and put it down here, so you got to have that so you won't roll away in neutral. The forward and reverse stock shifter, I'm going to leave that. This thing has a rear differential, a manual lock, where I can lock it in and out. And that's what I'm going to hook up to operate that. Um, here's our little gas strut set up here. Kind of hold this thing off your head while you're working on it. The throttle cable. I don't know if you can see that or not, but I made this little bitty linkage and used a one of the stock throttle cables off the bike. And it seems to work pretty good. Um, this goes down into a bell crank this came out of a golf cart as well. Uh, you can see the bell crank works just great with that cable setup. I had to make a bracket, but that's fine. Put in uh, a fuse block and some extra leads, you know, for stereos, lights, whatever. Uh, extra fuses, because I don't trust my wiring job. Which brings me to this snake pit of a mess. You know, normally I try to do a better job when I detail something, but man, I was suicidal after four or five days of this. I don't know, I guess I'll put a throw rug over it or something but anyway that's as good as that's gonna get 
uh, factory headers right now, but I got another set of factory headers that I've wrapped with the thermal wrapping to keep it cooler under here. Um, there's the stock club car fuel tank, and I made that little arrangement there. It's a pickup and a return line. There's the pump, regulator, and all that good stuff. Uh, all that seems to be functional. And there's my Rube Goldberg drive system. I don't know if that's going to work or not. That's that's my biggest fear right there. I don't know what's going to happen when I start driving this thing. But, but anyway, that's it. That was a little little walk around. Oh, and I was going to show you, if you can see this down here, that's the uh, that's the shifter setup that we came up with. I'm, again, I'm hoping that's going to work. But um, other than that, you know, I got a few more details. I got to get the brakes working. I don't want to don't want to drive it just yet. I have no functional brakes. I hear that's almost mandatory on these things. Uh, that and the cowling and a couple other little goodies. Uh, let's see, we'll run it through one more time. That's all good. Now for that high speed starter button. That's it. back to work on it. Uh, hopefully I'll have some videos of this thing actually moving oh, not too long from now.